Blood types. Right, so when we talk about blood types, we're referring to specific types of glycoproteins that are present on these erythrocytes, the red blood cells, that gives the cells its own identity, right? And these glycoproteins, so what's glycoproteins basically? A protein in a sugar group that is marked throughout the immune system, um, and so each, each specific cell is able to recognize itself based off of that, right? So each blood type, so what type of blood types do we have? We've seen before, so we're, if we're looking at the ABO blood types, we have four different kinds, right? So how many type of blood types total? So for now, we're gonna talk about just the four here. So A, B, O, A, B, right? And we're gonna be referring to them of what is present, what is not present. So there's two types of uh, material that's really important to understand. The first is the antigen, which is known just as a foreign protein, right? So a foreign protein, or it can be an allogenic protein where it's within the body, right? But it's a protein that's used in most cases, for example, in instances of allergies or pathogens infecting, right? So antigens are outside protein that's not really recognized, or it can be recognized by the immune system, right? And then you have antigens, and then you have antibodies. So antibodies are these globular proteins that we have that are present that are part of our adaptive immune system, and during our adaptive immune system, they're used in order to order for either some kind of immune response, some kind of opsonization, etc. Right. So, antibodies react with antigens. Right. That's really important to understand. When antibodies react with antigens, there's a process called agglutination. So, agglutination is where the antibodies bind to a specific antigens with other antibodies and this causes this adhesive stickiness, right? So instances of blood incompatibility, right? Whenever someone is having a blood transfusion and they have the wrong blood type, this phenomenon takes place, agglutination, right? And so let's see what antigen is present and what antibody is present. So each blood type have its, each blood types have their own antigen and their antibody, right? So the best way to remember this is whatever the blood type is, that is saying the presence of the antigen, right? So type A blood has A, type B blood have B antigens, type O blood have no antigens, and type AB blood have both A and B antigens, right? Vice versa, whatever is not present in the antigens is present as a form of antibodies. So Type A blood have B antibodies. Type B blood have A antibodies. Type O would have what? A and B antibodies, whereas AB will only have zero, right? And so remember, antigens react with antibodies, right? So that's why it's really unique how the blood has developed a way of showing that the presence of A antigens with B antibodies. So would there be a chemical reaction if A would go into an A? No, because here you would have the A antigens, but you only have the B antibodies. However, if you mix blood and there is an incompatibility with these, these different combinations, you have this process of agglutination taking place, right? So when we look at the universal donor and universal recipient, which one do you think it is? So when we think about universal donor and universal recipient, the universal donor are O's. Why do you think O's are the universal donors? Look at the table. So if you look at the table, they have no antigens, which means whatever blood type they put it in, there will be no reaction, right? No antibody binding, right? So I said, as I said before, you have this, for example, this B antibody. The B antibody is looking for this B antigen. This is present, they bind together, leads to the process of agglutination, right? And you have this buildup of all these different antibodies that are present only because of this. And this happens in transfusion and certain fetal conditions we'll talk about later, all right? So, donor. So it is, has, it has all the antibodies, right? but it has no antigen. So if O, type O's, would go into type B, there would be no immune response. A, B's are referred to as the universal recipients. What does that mean? 
Recipient means that they can re they can receive blood from anybody, right? Why? They have no antibodies. So no antibody, no immune response. No antigen, no no immune response. So the ABs can receive blood from anybody, whereas the Os can donate blood to everybody, right? So the Os can only donate to everybody, but they can only receive from Os because they have both a and B antibodies, right? So if the type B blood would try to insert into the O, the A antigens would bind with, of the A type A blood would bind to the A antibodies of the type O, and this would lead to a process of agglutination, right? And so it's really important to really understand what's going on. Versus vice versa, type AB can only give blood to who? Type AB can only give blood to ABs because every other one will have some kind of immune response, right? So I give you some kind of example, right? So if I ask you type O and type A, can this process take place? Can O donate blood to A? Well, if you look at the chart, O has zero antigens, right? So this will not trigger any immunity. So any kind of immunogenic response of agglutination, right? So this, is a check. This is possible. We can have this. However, if I do the opposite, for example, A going to O, is this possible? A going to O. So if you look at the table, no, because A has specifically A antigens, and the type A blood antigens will react with the type O antibodies that are present here. So this will not take place.